Hello cruisers and cruise enthusiasts, it's Cruiserella here and today I would like to talk to you about my upcoming cruises that I have planned. I don't have any until the fall but I thought I'd go over them with you and I'm going to go over prices and everything about them. But before I do, I would like to remind you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Cruiserella. You can also subscribe to my other channel, Vicki Carla, my original channel, uh, where I do all other stuff, an eclectic channel, but I try to keep this one with cruising and the hotels and excursions and everything associated with my cruising trips. Any other travel will be over there. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I have three cruises that we have booked. One I booked as late as yesterday. <laughs> um, I We have a cruise booked in September, the beginning of early, early September. Uh, heat of hurricane season, you might think, what are you doing? Here's the deal. All of the cruises I have booked leave out of Tampa. I live in Tampa Bay. So if they are to cancel a cruise, it's not a big deal for me. By the way, you may have noticed, I don't look so hot today. <laughs> I went to the dermatologist yesterday. It got me everywhere. I can't put on anything. I can, not even eye. I got stuff on my eyes, nose, everywhere. <laughs> even my neck. <laughs> so, yeah, I look a little rough. I'm okay. It's, in the long run, it's the, for the best, even though it looks a little rough to start. So, um, what I was saying is we live in the Tampa Bay area. So, if they were had a last minute cancellation because of weather or something, we haven't flown in, driven in, none of that. It's not a big deal for us if they cancel. So, with that said, first trip um, that we have planned, and let's, you know, I, we may come up with some between now and September, but anyway, so we <clears throat> quit, quit cruising in March so we could do exactly this sort of thing dentist, dermatologist, eyes, ears you know, doctors, we've been, you know, taking care of all that stuff. Okay, now we'll really get started. <laughs> all right, so it's Grandeur of the Seas, and um, have been on Royal Caribbean since last October on Mariner of the Seas, where we got COVID, and <laughs> I always remember that as the COVID cruise. And, um, but anyway, so we've been on Royal in a bit, and then we have in December, we have a long cruise. We have, oh, this one is the grander is a seven day cruise. I had to take, write down notes to, because I have so much information that I want to share with you on these cruises. And um, so the next one we have is on the Norwegian Jade. And that is in December. And that is a 14 day cruise. And again, out of Tampa. And then next February. Now we booked this cruise quite a while ago. We don't usually book them this far in advance, but we did on this one. And that is the Celebrity Constellation, a 12 night. And it has a very interesting itinerary and I will share it with you when we get to that part of it. So let's get started. It is leaving Tampa and we have a sea day and then we go to Key West. Now, the last one for sure, but maybe even the last two times I was supposed to go to Key West, it got canceled. Uh, then we have the Coco Cay, Perfect Day Coco Cay in the Bahamas. And then we have Bimini in the Bahamas, where we've never been. So that kind of excited me about this, this itinerary. Then we have Nassau, which we have been to many times, but we haven't been off the ship in Nassau in a while. And, um, you know, they had a new port that they're building and it looked pretty close to completion last time I was there. So I'm kind of interested to see that. Then we have a sea day and then we return to Tampa. So it is a seven day Bahama cruise. And let me tell you the specifics of that. I know some people say, how much does it cost to cruise? Well, that depends. <laughs> cruise line, itinerary, how long it is, what kind of, um, you know, what brand of ship you're on, what type of room you have, that sort of thing. So I'm going to tell you the specifics of this cruise. All right, I think this came through as a special, and I think it's because it is the height of hurricane season, the beginning of September. That is the most likely to get hit by a hurricane. Our out-of-pocket expenses total, and I'll break it down for you in just a minute, uh, for the two fares for Jerry and I, uh, was $1,587. And you have to, um, from that, subtract $138 
for insurance, which was $69 each, and $267.90, which is $133.95 each for taxes and board fees. So actually, the cruise fare is $1,181.10. So for each of us, $590.55. So basically, you know, just under $600 each for seven nights. So that's less than $100 a day for the actual cruise fare. Now, there, like I said, there's always something on it, and this one it was insurance and tax and port fees. Now, on top of that, um, I paid $99.98 for some specialty dining. I paid $339.98 for a pass to the Cocoa Beach Club because we were there before and really liked it. It's spendy, but we're not really doing a lot of excursions and we got such a good deal on the fair that I said we're going to treat ourselves to the beach club again. And the one excursion we did do is the dolphin ex um, encounter and beach day in Nassau for $218. There's not, you know, on Nassau we tend to kind of stay on the ship a lot, although I did kind of want to see the Newport, but I thought, you know, let's go on an excursion because we skipped Nassau so much, let's do it. So with taxes and gratuities on those, it was $709.92 for specialty dining and excursions plus our $15.87 that we paid for the tickets. So total that we have spent, total for everything, $2,296.92 for seven days on a ship sailing around the Bahamas plus Key West. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. I think that's a pretty good deal. We do have a window room. It's not a balcony room. Um, anything else I can say about it? That's cruise number one. Our next cruise is on the Norwegian Dawn, which we've been on twice before. Leaving out of Tampa again. This one is in December, and it's you know basically a holiday cruise because it gets back just before Christmas. And it is 14 days, and it goes into the Southern Caribbean and quite a few ports that are new to us. So let me pull that up. Okay, so day one, of course, is Tampa. And then we go to Key West. We'll see out of those two if we get to Key West. And then uh, Great Stirrup K, which is their private island, Norwegian's private island in the Bahamas. And then we have At Sea Day. And then we have Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic, which I like, that's a beautiful port now. It's new, it is beautiful the way it's built, um, grown up a bit. Then we have um, St. Thomas, Charlotte or Mali in St. Thomas, the US Virgin Islands. Then we have St. John's Antigua. And then Bridgetown Barbados, which that's a new port for us. And then St. George's Granada, or Grenada, I don't know how you say it, I'll know once I get there. Again, a new port for us. Then there's um, Willemstad, Curaçao, been there several times. And same with Orange Orangestad, I don't know how you say it, it means orange, <laughs> in Aruba. It's the only port I know in Aruba, been there a few times. Then we have a sea day, and then we have Georgetown Grand Cayman, which we've been there a few times, and then at sea, and then back to Tampa. All right, so that is on the Norwegian Dawn. All right, so what we got on the Norwegian Dawn is the equivalent of a mini suite. It's called, a, well, they call it a mini suite in some paperwork, but it's actually called a club balcony because it doesn't actually have the suite amenities such as special dining and things like that. Grandeur of the Seas, the Royal Caribbean, the first one I was talking about, that is their oldest ship in, in Royal Caribbean's fleet, and it's a smaller ship, so it doesn't have a lot of balconies, so there was that wasn't even available. So, But anyway, so we're excited about the new stops. All right, so how much does it cost? The base fee is $2,429.10 each, and taxes and port fees for each of us is $276.44. The insurance is... $239 each. These are all eaches. The beverage add-on is $305.20 and the dining service charge $23.80. So that equals $3,273.54 each times two is $6,547.08. Sounds like a lot, 
but you have to consider this is 14 days. This is two weeks. So cut it in half, $3,200 if it was a seven day cruise. Now, those um, beverage add-on, things like that, it's all kind of a package deal, I guess, because that price, now you have to consider that price, comes with a short excursion discount, and I'll get into that in a minute. It comes to with a military appreciation discount. It has three specialty dinings. It has two internet, you know, each of us get internet, uh, 300 minutes, but I don't want to be on it that much, and both get unlimited open bar. And we get excursion, I said short excursion discount. And just to tell you what that is, like in the Bahamas, we're gonna do, I signed us up for, <laughs> Jerry's not gonna love this, but anyway, the swim with the pigs, I've always wanted to do that. Okay, that excursion is $149, but because of this excursion discount thing is $89.10. And that's each, right? St. Thomas, um, we're going to, when we go to St. Thomas, we're actually gonna to go to St. John. It's, you motor over in a boat. St. John is also part of the U.S. Virgin Islands, and most of the island, on my understanding, is a national park. And it's regularly $99, but I'm paying $44.10. Barbados, we're going on a tour of the town, I think. And it's normally $109, but it's costing me $53.10. The tour in Grenada is not a town tour. It's like uh, rainforest and waterfalls and stuff. And it's normally $75, but it's going to cost $22.50. And then in Grand Cayman, a turtle thing and that someone else suggested $79 normally, but we're paying $26.10. So basically the full price of all those tours was $511, but we got a discount of $276.10 for a total paid of $234.90. Um, there was also some other small discount in that total discount of like $50 and something. I'm not sure what that one was, <coughs> but it's very confusing because then I have another invoice that said that our excursions total $745.90, but the ones I just read you is what is on our cruise contact, cruise contract. So it's kind of confusing when they, when they add the stuff in and there's excursions that are discounted and then you get this other discount and but anyway, we got a good deal on the excursion. So that's a lot of activity for the whole trip for 14 days, beverages, internet, specialty dining. I think it's three of them, I think. And because there's two of us, it's kind of like it's six uh, for $6,500 for two weeks. All right, so the last one we have planned is um, the, this room is a veranda, but I got a deal on it. <laughs> I'm always searching for the deals. And the first one, the grandeur of the sea, that's a deal by price, definitely by price. And that's why I went with some of the upgrades on excursions. Norwegian Jade, it was more about all the things that went with it, like the like the drinks and the excursion and you know all of that. So it was more about the total package than just the base price. The Constellation, this is a down and dirty price. There's no perks in this at all. All right, so this is a 12-night celebrity cruise leaving out of Tampa. It is a veranda and it is a partial view. In other words, a partially obstructed view. And I did, I dug deep and did a lot of research into this room to figure out exactly how obstructed is it. I don't mind an idea of the idea of a bit of a, a obstructed veranda because you can still go out on your deck and have the warmth and hear the ocean and, and get some sun or whatever you want. Now, if you had, you know, a lifeboat right in front of you, it might be disappointing, but you can still step outside. What it turns out is this room, it's room number 8006, and it is at the very front of the ship. And the next room to it is a room, it's on the starboard side, so it's on the side um, for me. <laughs> um, and so they come up and the next rooms are out longer. Now, I don't know if they are actually like, last time I was on that ship, I think those rooms were actually like, um, we call it, um, 
like first mates rooms. They weren't like, I don't know that they're guest rooms, but they may be. But anyway, they stick out. So what happens in this room is on this side, we're going to have the wall that normally you have, you know, a wall on either side. And on this side where you have another passenger room, you're going to have the wall come out and then slant down. And it'll stop at your railing. This wall is going to extend beyond the railing. So what it means is you have a view looking out, but when you turn this way, you're not going to have a view where you can look as far as you can see, you know, like that. You're going to have a wall that cuts you off. Now, I guess if you leaned out, which never lean over a balcony, but if you did, you might be able to see. I don't know. To me, as someone who might be filming something, I think, oh, great, a windbreak on one side so that I don't get all the wind noise. But anyway, that's what it is. It's not your straight on obstructive view. You have a peripheral um, bit of, um, what do they call it? Obstruction. You have a bit of a peripheral obstruction on the left side. So bonus, I don't, that doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> it's just going to, as I say, cut down on wind and wind noise. Okay. So now this is an interesting itinerary. Let me pull it up. Okay. So this is next February. So we start out in Tampa. Then we're at, have a day at sea. Then we're in New Orleans. And then we're in New Orleans again. And the next day we're in New Orleans. <laughs> and we are in New Orleans on the 12th of February, the 13th of February, and the 14th of February. We leave like at 3 in the afternoon, so it's an early day in on the third day. But the middle day, the 13th, that's Fat Tuesday. That is the culmination of the whole Mardi Gras season. So... It's going to be a pretty exciting time there. And then the next day should be quiet. <laughs> usually, I don't know how it is now. When I lived in New Orleans, I was a kid, so things could have changed a lot. But usually that day, quiet, the Wednesday after. <laughs> and then we have a sea day, and another sea day, because we're going to Honduras from there. We're going to uh, Roatan. And then we go to Belize. And then we go to Cozumel. And then we have a sea day, and a sea day, and back in Tampa. So I think that's pretty exciting too. Um, yeah, I've, I I want to say we've never been to New Orleans. We've been to New Orleans, but we've never been to New Orleans on a cruise ship. Now, three days there, two nights, three days. Um, one of them being Mardi Gras. I have family in New Orleans still. And last time we went to New Orleans, we drove there and visited family and stuff. We we didn't stay with them. We want, I wanted Jerry to have the whole French Quarter experience. We stayed in the French Quarter because he'd never been there. But I don't think they'll be there because when it's this close to Mardi Gras, they get out of town. They go skiing or something, <laughs> you know. They do something else. They like Jazz Festival. They, they recommend Jazz Fest in the spring. But anyway, back to this. So the fares, how much does it cost? Our fares each were $2,900. And they were running a promotion. So we got $1,093 off of each of our fares. So that meant that my fare was $1,807. Now, Jerry, they had a second person discount. So there was an additional $890 off of his. And then he got another discount of $195. And I believe that was part of the military appreciation. Jerry's a Vietnam veteran. And um, um, so he got $195. So mine was, like I said, $1,807. His fare was actually $722, so the total for us both was $2,529. We each had taxes and fees of $212.58, so that brought my fare to $2,019.58 and his to $934.58 for a total of $2,954.16, so just under $3,000 for 12 nights for two people. That is a no perks rate. It just, it was a, what they call a BOGO 60, which I think meant 60% off or something for his. Oh, and the room obstruction is considered a 5% obstruction, if that tells you just how minimal that really is. We did not get um, any kind of anything else. No Wi-Fi drinks, specialty dining, any of that. 
we typically don't get like buy a package for beverages and stuff because we don't spend as much as the packages usually cost and we just pay as we go and on some cruise lines you actually get points for the money you spend on them i know you do with holland so it counts toward a mariner status sorry it was house cleaning day so dust and stuff had to have something to drink here <laughs> Um, yeah, that is a no perks rate. So you can see that this one is two days less than the Norwegian and about half the price. But the Norwegian one included a lot of stuff that this one on the Constellation doesn't. But anyway, those are our three cruises coming up. Those are all the pricing of what we have given, the money we've actually given them. Um, obviously, we'll spend more money on board, especially on grandeur and constellation because we don't have like you know drink packages and stuff i hope that you enjoyed the video and found it informative just wanted to be upfront with the cost of these so that you understand so that people understand that it just isn't apples to apples it's not that easy to tell you how much a, a cruise costs without a caveat of what that includes what that doesn't include oh and one thing that the um Constellation did not include that I did not catch and I need to go do something about it and I know why I did it now um, it, it didn't include any kind of um, insurance or you know travel protection so I think that's because I was thinking at the time we booked it so far in advance that I was going to wait and see if we were going to do other cruises and then just get travel insurance so we do have to add that into the cost and that would probably be another I'm going to say, oh, probably $200, at least 200 Yeah, probably about $200 more to add that insurance. So, And I will do that before we get on that cruise ship. So thanks for watching the channel. Hope you give the video a thumbs up. And um, tell me in the comments uh, which of these cruises sounds the most interesting to you. <laughs> I'm excited about all of them. <laughs> Grandeur of the Sea will be interesting because it is a smaller, older ship. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it's, you know, I think it'll be like the Carnival Paradise where it's a little bit, you know, just relaxing because it doesn't have all of that. Just kind of chill, kind of laid back. Again, thanks a lot. I'll quit talking. Bye.